Hey everybody, Dr. LJ Rose here, and this is the, Natu uh, the Natural Wellness Academy. And this is a special webinar, and it's one that I have been hoping for back from the first time that Dink and I spoke. And what was that a couple of years ago now, right? That's true. I know you were kind of looking around the academy for a few months and you had sent in yes. and then we finally spoke. So it's I want to introduce you. Now I'm I know that I'm going to mispronounce your your, your name. I know I can I, I, I pronounce Dinka and Kamat very well, but how do you pronounce Mujaji? Muyagich. Muyagich. Okay, so I was going to get you that totally wrong. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, Dinka is a recent graduate of the CBD cannabis program, but she's got quite the story to tell us. So. I would really like to just go ahead and get you started, but I want to start out really tell us kind of like your background, because you were even just telling me about how you met your husband who was um, in the um, in the diplomatic corps too, and, and just kind of about your life. And then I know you have a very special story to tell us about cannabis and you'll be sharing your screen at that time too. Wonderful. Well, first of all, I will just say how uh, proud and um, grateful I am that I'm part of this group and that I found Dr. LJ and that we, that she, that she didn't have to convince me, but we had such a long conversation. If I remember, like it was like two hour conversation about everything what I have done on my own and how much this academy did help me. And I'm really uh, thankful to you to be here tonight. Um, I hope my story, and just my founding, my, 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 my path to find myself here where I am right now, it was very interesting. And there are so many of us outside to search for that. And uh, here I am who can really speak to all of us uh, out there. There were cannabis naive that doesn't know nothing about it, but yet wants to help their loved ones um, at once. And this is what I uh, was going to, uh, uh, say about it and um, when I was speaking about it before not even knowing what I'm talking about basically um, I am born in um, ex-Yugoslavia in the country that doesn't exist anymore but that's now Bosnia and Herzegovina and I'm born in Sarajevo now it's very interesting because we had Olympics in 1984 so since Olympics are going on in China so um I um, lived in Sarajevo. I met my husband there and we lived there for 13 years. I had a big wellness and spa um, uh, business and I uh, was trained in Germany previously as a aromatherapist, Reiki therapist, um, uh, healing with the stones, um, with the uh, colors and also working with energy. So obviously my whole path was um, esoterics was natural healings. Um, uh, at that time, it was a war in my country. So I always wanted to study medicine, but in Germany being refugee at that time, I was 21, I could not study. So I was immediately found a path with a um, natural um, a medicine and alternative medicine. And Germany at that time was just blooming of it. You know, I mean, I know we're talking now about alternative ways of healing, but Germany in the 90s was just blooming in alternative ways of healing. So um, that's my path. I came here 2013 um, to United States. I promised my husband that I would come back. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I own him that part. And um, we have a two children, Sabrina and Danis. I know it's hard. I mean, I, 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 it's still something that I, I know it's been a few years, but I, I know that that is something that you never get over. My, my brother lost a child too. It's, um, yes, so you know how the life can turn really awfully. Um, Sabrina was three years old when she was first diagnosed with neuroblastoma in Bosnia. Um, we were in Austria and Vienna for um, treatments. To make long sh story short in that um, case, Sabrina was seven years um, through her uh, seven years uh, uh, without cancer. So she was really cancer-free seven years long. 
I did all these seven years, I did alternative ways of healing. I did a uh, healthy diets and everything else. However, we knew that the age of puberty could be um, relapse happening. So sure enough, she was near nine and a half here in the United States when she relapsed again with the same cancer. So, so here starts this whole search of how to help your child uh, at home and being a parent. And I think also caregiver, I mean, you all maybe can relate to that. Just being a caregiver, how much you're trying to search and find the best way to heal and help your loved one to survive and just to make the quality of life. And in that point, I knew that it's not good. It's not good that it's relapsing all the time. And I knew that quality of life is that what we want to um, take as approach. So, um, of course, we went through protocol in the hospitals. And um, um, so um, I just want to, I am so sorry if I get a little bit all over the place. I'm trying to get myself together and then come to the point really how this whole thing happened with the CBD. And um, um, so anyway, mixing now the age, years in a, a Vienna in a hospital and years in, a, in the United States. So, so come back to Vienna when she was three. So they introduced immunotherapy. Everybody you know about immunotherapy. And then through, during the immunotherapy, they're giving patients morphine. That's a protocol period. So here they are giving her morphine at the time of the immunotherapy and she's reacting like insane. She's uh, very aggressive. She's uh, uh, acting hallucinative. Uh, she has a, a it, it was so bad that I, she was three years old or maybe in that point she was four years old uh, girl. I could not hold her how aggressive she was and what scenes you have to, to go through as a caregiver, especially as a parent, um, not underestimate any caregiver, but if something about being a parent in that moment with this little child is really um, very hard to watch that. So anyway, with um, uh, my husband and I agree, we were going to stop all this, not knowing that actually it was not from immunotherapy, it was actually from opioids. Here we are coming back to United States. We are through protocol. She had in that point, like two relapses. The third relapses, uh, no, two relapses, I'm sorry, third, two relapses, we are back to immunotherapy in a Children's National in Washington, DC. And I don't know, did I say that I live in uh, uh, Maryland and we're, we're, we belong to uh, Washington, DC Children's National Hospital. And um, at that time, they are deciding on immunotherapy. She's getting better. She's uh, clean. And um, we're going to do immunotherapy again. And I'm saying no morphine. We can't do morphine. I think, I don't know what it gets me, but I had, I, I put like one and one or two and I was like, wait a minute, this is not immunotherapy. It's actually opiates. I think this is what ha actually happened back then. And I, oh, and you know what it happened, uh, how I came to that. Now I remember. I, I mean, I have all these notes just to not forget them. Forgive me. Atiban. So before 2013, bef before they figure out that she has a relapse again, they saw seven years cancer free. We uh, land at a pediatric unit only. And then um, they're giving her Atiban to calm down. She sees the squirrels in the ceiling. She literally says, whoa, there are squirrels. She's getting like so high that it was just insanity. This is where I came to like, okay, wait a minute. I had this situation before that was morphine. This is now Activan. I start researching internet myself and uh, mind that I'm not as great technical person. And um, anyway, so, um, I realize it's a morphine. So we are in immunotherapy and I'm saying no morphine. They said, okay, then we will start with the fentanyl. So I don't know nothing about fentanyl. I start researching. I know it's a nerve pain. I was like, okay, well, I guess we have to go with something. Obviously it's a the nerve pain. 
So we're going into the therapy with fentanyl. I am not happy. She's getting numb and she's keep telling me, I don't want to sleep. Please don't let them make me sleep. Please, I want to play. I want to watch TV. And I'm seeing that child is just can express herself in that age that she doesn't want to sleep. There has to be a way that has to be a way that she can receive immunotherapy without opiates. Here is the, it's super interesting story, honestly. Um, so the, here is Anastasia, uh, an, uh, head of Anastasia unit coming uh, to give her extra fentanyl and check it out on her. She had a button so she can always press it, fentanyl if she feels more pain. And I said to her, really, I mean, do we really have to do this for, especially for the children they're aware that she can express herself, that she can have opinion? She's like, I don't even know why they're drugging up those kids. She said, um, there's many other medications. I said, what do you mean? She said, there's gabapentin. I said, what's gabapentin? So uh, here I am researching day and night. I mean, mind that I don't sleep months probably at that point. So I realized the gabapentin is the way to go. So I called it the same anesthesiologist. She brings her staff upstairs. Here's pediatric oncology coming to my room. And my room was quite every time when something's happening, everybody's there. I was almost arrested twice. Um, obviously I'm European, so I don't fit maybe to all American <laughs> rules here. Um, anyway, um, so I said, okay, let's try. And anesthesiologist here, here this is, I, we were so lucky. And I think many other kids today now, Sabrina was the first patient to start with a gabapentin and she never received um, fentanyl anymore after that. So she, she get her immunotherapy for more days without any is, opiates. Is gabapentin, a, is, that's a neurotransmitter, correct? That's, that's the uh, medication, that's a synthetic medication that reacts to the brain receptors for the ner nerve right. pain. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. And um, so it's not, um, um, uh, it's not narcotic, it's a pain relief. So she can play, she can watch TV, she can do everything what all girls, you know, 11 year old girl can do, right? So here we go, quality of life. Today, I am proud to say that Children's National, I'm still in touch with them because I volunteer time to time, um, that children more and more using cabapentin and less and less um, fentanyl or morphine for immunotherapy. So, so how did the CBD, like, how did you find out about so, CBD? So, and then, um, so here we are, um, on the third relapse, um, and we are understanding that, um, that this is going to be the path to the end. And I knew that I want a quality of life for my child. And I start researching. And here I'm researching CBD, cannabis oil. Sometimes I did read somewhere from Canada, something, I don't have any idea. I always, um, the one thing that I always, uh, a place that I always like to go, it's our uh, local apothecary. And they had beautiful natural stuff there, you know, like, you know, for uh, vitamins. And I, I would go there and buy Sabrina all kind of stuff to help her, you know, with anxiety, with a, um, uh, a nausea, et cetera. Anyway, um, there was a, that CBD oil that I was looking for. Uh, oh, um, actually one of the friends first sent me some CBD and that I would come later on how many CBDs we have today. So we got one and we realized that it didn't do as strong. Now I can say it was not that strong probably as the other one that I found, but it still got her a little bit anxiety down. So she was really looking, uh, doing well with that. I mean, in that point I was just getting like morning and night and it was taste of, um, uh, mint and I was like okay well that's fine she said okay mint taste is good but mind that Sabrina was really tough patient so for her you got to really go above and beyond for her to take stuff then they had they told me this is much stronger um and it's a resin and um I actually kept that little uh it was a resin of CBD but in that it it's a CBD with really, really low THC in it. Uh, I probably 
would think that is the same thing under um, 0 0.3. Um, THC, but at that time, I didn't have any idea. I didn't have any clue. I know that I paid that drop $100 and that was dark and gooey and I brought it home. She hates it. She didn't want to touch it. She didn't want to use it. The pain was uh, coming and going and um, they gave me, um, in a hospital, they gave me oxycodone uh, with Tylenol and I kept that oxycodone and Tylenol. And I was um, giving her that oxycodone and Tylenol morning, oh, once a day at that point. So I started with, uh, the pain was persistent. So we go morning and night um, oxycodone. And I started this resin and I started resin morning and night before oxycodone. She was still needed oxycodone. And then after I researched a little bit more and more, I started that every two hours. So now if I go back, if we go back to the symptoms, she had also crying episodes because the cancer was only in a bone marrow, not in an organ. So the, the, the you know, can you imagine the pain in the bone marrow of cancer? So the, the, the blood could not um, repair itself. So there was no red blood counts, almost none on the end. So um, I did use, give her every two hours CBD resin with a honey and I would dilute that a little bit in a little spoon and she loved honey and tea. So I would always kind of give that with a honey and then she would drink the tea and she would be fine. To that point where she said, um, I just need that CBD. Can you give me that CBD, you know? so. And I'm telling you that was 2016, let's say September, 2016. We took um, uh, our family on a trip to North Carolina. She loved North Carolina and mountains. We stayed there for seven days. We went to a hospital once, unfortunately, she didn't feel that good. And that doctor, head of oncology told me, whatever you do with that child, you did so well you had her for a long time. So that this is a moment where I realize, my gosh, looks like really I'm extending her life every day. So saying that I realized that this CBD really changed the way she feels the every day of life as long as she lasts. And now we're coming to the, um, to um, the point where hospice took over. Um, she told me she doesn't wanna go anymore to hospital and the hospital said, there's no reason to come anymore if you don't want to. So my house was packed with a methadone, with oxycodone, I could literally kill the street. And one thing that I was talking also about in the symposium for uh, pediatric oncology is that we paid two and a half dollars for hundred uh, oxycodone in a bottle, hundred of them, two and a half dollars. If you buy a Bactrin uh, antibiotic, it's like eight and a half dollars. So this is how easy to make people addictive with the opiates. Um, so, um, so they, so the hospice came, that was also an interesting story related to that. And it says like, you have to give her methadone because she's probably in a pain. So I'm like, but I don't see that she's in a pain, but I was like, okay, I'm afraid. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how this works. So I gave her drop of methadone inside of her um, cheek um, uh, uh, sublingual. And she started hallucinating again. And it was very bad in a way that the sound was really, the sound was very horrific. And um, I called my husband. I said, look, I think I, if you agree with me, I'm going to take her off. I don't think this is right. We will just continue with CBD the way I was doing. He said, I agree. And um, so we took her off the methadone. We continue our CBD every two hours. And I, I wrote everything down. I have a book that I 
kept everything down. What time was it? What time did I give this? What time did I did I give that? So I really kept the chart for everything. So on Thursday night, she just gave me, like she put the hand over me. She said, oh, my mommy, I love you. And Friday at 1.15, she left us. So that CBD kept her quality of life and being alert to be with us pain-free. And I knew she was pain-free, but I was so afraid that I didn't know because there is there's no information out there, especially no information for children. Nothing is out there to tell you how you recognize the pain and what can you do? What are the alternatives for the better quality of life or can we choose alternative? So after that, um, I, I was going to share a little uh, a PowerPoint, but I will do that um, very soon. So I wanna say that um, how I came to the, um, to volunteer with American Childhood Cancer Organization, I realized that I am, I feel like a messenger because I feel so mad that I feel so like I must say somewhere something out there because this is, this is real, this is happening. And oh my gosh, is this really true that this such a magnificent plant as a cannabis can really change people's life? And how lucky we are on this earth to have such a plant to, to heal ourselves and just to help our, our chemical system in the body. There's a plan who can really change the chemicals in your body. It is. And um, they invited me to, um, to share my story and write the abstract for American child, International American Childhood, um, International Pediatric Cancer Symposium and um, I was the only parent, the one per first parent who spoke about CBD oil 2017 in Washington, DC. I was lucky that it was in Washington, DC. Um, and this is where I presented first time my story, exactly what I'm telling you right now. That's exactly what I did. I just said it out there. And I said, that's what I have done. The interest was just enormous. How many people, so I, I gotta tell you first, the, the place was huge. We're coming there 15 minutes earlier. There was nobody there. I thought there is nobody is going to visit my story. And it was at 5 p.m., like on the end of the day, right? I was like, there's nobody's going to come. My husband was there. And suddenly people are, I guess, coming from other uh, rooms that they had, um, uh, uh, meetings, doctors, nurses, Sabrina's doctor and nurses. I, I saw them head of oncology in Washington, DC. Um, and um, the place was full. The place was full. And it was very hard as it is today in front of all of you. But the story has to be told. There's so many parents out there. They're trying to help. And um, you don't have to break the law to help your endocannabinoid system. I mean, there's a CBD. There is something that we can always try. I, I was cannabis naive. I never smoked pot in my life in that point. I don't know what it is, but it took me so long to find my path and my passion for it and to, to search for, for academies, for schools. Who is that perfect match for me? And I'm so lucky to be part of you, all of you here today. So I am, so um, I'm going to share actually my PowerPoint that I prepared for you. And then we can maybe chat about it if you have more questions for me. Oops, give me just a little chance to, guys. So I, I just have to say you are riveting and you are doing so well. I'm going back to muting myself, but I just have to tell you. Thank that. you so much. I really need it probably in this point. <laughs> um, oops, why is this like thing not going? Okay. Um, okay, so here's Sabrina. Obviously, she was always goofy child with you can see that that green foot with a with a, a play-doh in it on her wonderful brother who 
is the reason to wake up every day. And um, he's uh, gr- he was a great support to her. Um, he's 19 today, and uh, he is in uh, Syracuse University. Um, hi, Danis. <laughs> you must be somewhere in a crowd. Um, I just thought I would share this um, from her friends in a school. Um, and now to come to this um, Congress, this is how it looked like. Um, this is actually the, the person that I hug um, is Dr. Mini. She's the head of oncology of Ch- Children National Hospital in Washington, DC. Tiny little woman, but ooh, man, she's, she's very, very um, tough and very knowledgeable. On the both sides of um, us are the women's actually from Europe. One is from, comes from Germany and one is from Bosnia representing American, uh, I'm uh, presenting childhood cancer organizations. And then you can see here on the, on the uh, bottom of, of the, on the right um, uh, the picture, right picture on the bottom, it says a um, childhood cancer parent experience with a CBD. I mean, honestly, at this point, I didn't know, I just said what I know, what I found out on the internet on my own. And here it is today to celebrate our magnificent plant, Mr. or Mrs. Cannabis. <laughs> All right. I know there's many of you out there now, right now who really know what I'm talking about and probably in this point know much more uh, about it than me. I just graduated from, um, from the academy, um, but um, frankly, there's so much for me to do. Uh, there's so much information that I took in. And as if you could understand, probably many of you can relate to that, that my English is not my uh, first language. So um, it was really tough to learn all this and making sure that I understand every single component of the, um, of the cannabinoids. But what I brought here tonight is just for all of you that are new for this today and just to kind of get your interest and then we can go with our next webinars, we can kind of go in um, through um, in detail. So endocannabinoids, I mean, this is, are the chemicals produced inside of your body that attach to the same receptors as some phytocannabinoids. Phytocannabinoids come from the plants, we all know. So um, they are very similar to our endocannabinoids that we are producing in our own body. Endocannabinoid chemicals help maintain balance in the body, 100%. Endocannabinoid deficiency is real. And please remember that you can Google it, you can find it everywhere. uh, first endocannabinoid was found 1992. So it's real. It really can change your life if we make sure and we realize that we do have deficiency. And with any chronic disease, most likely you have endocannabinoid deficiency. CBD is an essential component of medical marijuana. CBD is derived directly from hemp and it's cousin of marijuana. So again, this is something that I made just for people. They are first time with us here. CBD is rich in cannabinoids that can help with endocannabinoid deficiency. Oops, I guess I missed one. Oops, I'm sorry. I missed one of my, all right. So um, CBD, reduces anxiety, PTSD symptoms, arthritis, pain, depression, restless leg syndrome, menopause symptoms also used for pets. The reason why I put all this here is that that a lot of these, the uh, symptoms relate to me personally. And I would like to tell you how my life had continued after um, this journey. So um, I am going to say um, going through trauma as a caregiver and a parent caregiver, you're going through huge anxiety for, through all times, right? 
you have a trauma that you went through. And those are different kinds of PTSD symptoms that we know. So um, I uh, realized that I am living in a bubble, that I don't know how to cope with all this, that I don't sleep very well. So I try to go to a psychologist, but I am obviously a very strong person and can express myself. So I, would, I didn't feel comfortable at psychologist who's going to just sit down in a chair and listen to me. Um, um, I was prescribed Xanax, Xanax to use for my um, anxiety and my uh, trauma and my thoughts that I had um, uh, waking up at night um, and so on. So, um, and I did use in the morning, I use at night before I go to bed in the morning, because when I wake up, I have thoughts, I have a traumatic, um, uh, traumatic uh, scenes that were still coming um, at all the times, um, screams and um, needles and um, accessing ports. And it was it's just terrible. Um, then I, for some reason, and I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot about CBD. So here I am again, going back to my apothecary, buying CBD and start using the CBD. So in that point, I, um, I don't know, should I just stop sharing this? And then we just chat and I will just um, what I want to show you just before I do that, I just want to go back because I would like to see you. Uh, my daughter loved this and she said, you will never have this day again and make it count. And I just want to share this with you, how important it is to just, um, make it count every single day. I'm coming back to you because I really would like to tell you in faith, I want to see you. Um, so I'm buying CBD and I'm starting to use CBD and here we go. Sometimes I forget, and we all can relate to that. You forget you're taking, you're not taking you're back and forth. And then I'm taking, um, um, uh, Xanax again, time to time then taking it off. Then I realize, um, okay, the Xanax is not, obviously I'm very, person who really loves nature and believe in mother nature, what we, how lucky we are, what we got. I said, okay, I need to make this straight. So I went again and researched CBD. I went again myself to, to learn again and research everything. And then I realized, okay, hmm, this is like a, homeo a homeopathy. I worked with homeopathy before in Germany and I was like, okay, so basically it's most important how you use it. When do you use it? And what is it good for me? So one size doesn't fit all, right? So this is what I figure out on my own. I was like, okay, wait a minute. Okay, this, so I have to really maybe think about it like homeopathy, like something supernatural. And mind at that point, I am not in academy. I don't know nothing about it except myself being willing to look to help myself, to help myself, to seek for help, crying for help. And knowing what I did for my daughter, I was like, okay, I need to help myself. I decided, okay, I'm taking CBD. So in that point, I tried many um, different kinds until I realized, okay, well, obviously there is so much stuff out there. So what is real thing? So again, going back and forth. Um, and um, I was lucky that I, I was close to NIH here, um, National Institute of Health. And they do research on CBD. So uh, one of my friends said, hey, we are doing symposium. Would you like to be part of it? And I was part of that symposium for seven days with a National um, uh, Institute of Health on CBD and research on CBD. Then I realized, oh my God, that's it. So I start using my CBD morning and night in the same time before meal and so I don't eat anything 30 minutes before. I don't eat anything afterwards, 30, minute, uh, 30 minutes afterwards. And I kept in my mouth as long as I can and leave it the way it is. Um, 
So going back to my list of all these symptoms that I had, um, so I am also thyroid patient for since I was 22. I'm 50 years old today. Um, so I have a hypothyroid uh, thyroid, and um, I'm taking medications since. And um, I do have arthritis in my both knees and my neck. So I'm having pains um, all the time, as all the time. So this is where I start um, working on myself and trying to figure out, is this CBD or am I really getting rid of the pain? Is this CBD or my thyroid medication is really getting low? Is this CBD and I am not seeking Xanax to today, to this point right now? And of course, in the meantime, I met Dr. LJ and I decided to be part of Cannabis Academy because I thought I am able to say out loud out there and help others. And that's what my mission is about. Um, so today I am getting less and less pain in my both knees. In fact, these days we're walking our dog and my husband is like, you're not complaining. I said, I know in this point, I'm using also topical CBD. I'm taking CBD twice a day. I also taking CBG, but this is another, um, a webinar where we can, um, go and talk and you guys who are into the cannabis already, you know about CBD, CBG, CBGA, CBDA, how important they are, those cannabinoids, and how much they impact your body and your nervous system and all and, and your receptors and how that affects your whole body. So that is crucial. And the and again, being cannabis and naive, you don't have to break a law if this is what you're afraid of to use your medication. CBD is harmless as is THC, but um, for those that are really afraid, I can warmly recommend CBD and it's going to help you. So- um, Well, you mentioned, uh, um, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. you mentioned yes. CBG and there are actually, they think that there are maybe infinite numbers of them that they've already identified 113 of these yeah. different compounds, these different cannabinoids and not all of them, in fact, very few of them are psychoactive. In other words, they would make you high. You don't get high from CBD, even if you use one that has a little bit higher of an amount of THC, uh, you still don't get high because it kind of mutes that reaction. And um, it's sometimes good to have those other cannabinoids because there's something called the entourage effect where yes. they work together in a synergistic way. But it only fact, if you want that, if you use THC uh, for medical purposes, even, you know, happens that your, your loved one or, or client have this um, more high episode. If you think that CBD can regulate that and brings the, um, brings him down or her down. So that's very fascinating that you have everything in one plant. Like that's, mm -hmm. yeah. that's for me, very fascinating. And um, 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 different kind of cannabinoids, if you have a, a different kind of cannabinoids, they are um, in, 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 a, in a one tincture, this is even better. Like mm -hmm. in a, most of CBD, good, quality CBDs, you have this part of CBDA and part of THC. It's and called that's full spectrum, you, the full spectrum that, oil. That's right. called full spectrum. Exactly. This is where you have a most of cannabinoids and THC, and that's the best. You have an isolate where you don't have, you have only cannabinoids, but nothing else. There is a broad spectrum where um, you don't have a um, THC inside. Or you have a part of THC. Isolate doesn't have any THC. I'm sorry. So, but you have a cannabinoids, but no THC. The very important part is that THC and CBD work so well together, and you want to have that little bit of it. But it's also 0 0.3. It's enough for those that are really afraid of. Yeah, I don't. You you probably I, won't even test with THC with that small of an amount too. Exactly. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, something that I want to mention, I mean, there are a lot of companies right now selling CBD, you know, everybody is kind of like this new gold rush, people are always finding things to to sell, but not all CBD is created equally. And you have to source out. So can you give some information on that? Like, how do you know what is good CBD? Like we teach in the class how you read laboratory, you know, reports and yeah and it's still tough you know it's super tough even uh, right now we don't have enough regulations and when i was part of this uh, uh nih symposium they are aware of no regulations and everyone is speaking about how regulations are important and i hope for us as a coaches that when the regulations comes in then this is where we will step in where we will right now they the, the, the clients and patients have only us to tell them, hey, this is what we know. This is what, what it is. Um, the good quality CBD at this point, um, you have a box, um, you go to the store and then you see the, uh, the code, that, that code that you can open up and just read everything about it. That's the first thing that should be available to you on the actual packaging. So it's a barcode that you can, Take your camera, you know, everybody can do it. It's super simple. It pops up the window with- um, You mean the what QR code? The QR code. QR right. code. And uh, it pops out on, the, on your window and says, um, third party tested, tested on uh, pesticides, tested on metals and so on. Mold, so you, you got to make sure it doesn't- Mold grown without mold potent. because mold can really affect a person who has autoimmune issues, and that's 100%. why you've got to be really careful where you're where you're sourcing your cannabis and, products from. Yeah, as often they are tested, and that's the most important thing that they are tested often, and they're const they are continuously having good results. Um, those companies, and of course, they are where they are grown. You know, that's also a little bit where I was looking. Okay, where they're grown, what environment is that? You know. Um, uh, um, cannabis plant is really, they say it's easy to grow. However, it grows fast, it's easy to grow, but I think it needs such, such a patience. And I, and I think that's a, that's a beauty of it. Like I'm, it's, it's very special. It's like a special angels in those, in mm-hmm. that plant that, I, I, I've always said, I feel like we have the symbiotic relationship with the plant, you know, um, we're going to go into questions soon. And um, do you want us to stay in this mode? Or do you want me to go into gallery? Because I think if somebody asks a question, then they'll be in the box, and you'll be able to see them and interact. But um, just recognizing that there are a lot of people who are curious about CBD, they want to get the results that you're getting with CBD. They just don't want to have anything to do with THC, and that's understandable, but we don't want people to throw the baby out with the bathwater because there's a lot of other cannabinoids. There are what are called terpenes, which is really the aromatherapy of cannabis. These are the hydrocarbons, the molecules, the compounds that give the specific odor but also they give you the different effects. There's something called myrcene that relaxes you. There's something called pinene that makes you more alert. So we are actually going to be offering this summer, and we're definitely getting you involved in this, Dinka. And it is a (laughs) CBD certification. Even though we cover CBD and the CBD cannabis certification, this one is going to be focused on CBD and terpenes and aromatherapy because really terpenes are aromatherapy so that we do want to also have that and um, I noticed that we have a couple people raising their hands right now and one of them is Lizzie who is kind of like the perfect person to talk about um, about terpenes. Lizzie did you want to say something? Yes I I just wanted to uh, say thank you so much Dinka for your vulnerable authenticity and for coming and sharing your story with us. It's just, um, as a mother, especially my heart goes out to you. Mm -hmm. Um, and as a, as a cannabis coach, I, I tell my mentees, I tell, uh, people I speak to in dispensaries, the most important thing that that you have to offer your client is your story and for people to be able to connect with you. So for you, and sorry, 
emotional. Um, <laughs> you had me, I, I was. Yeah, well, you're such a mommy, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're such a good mommy. So I, I knew that was, that was just going right to your heart. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just so glad that you're, that you um, gave yourself permission to find the strength to fight that fight and get out there and speak and share your story like that's so brave and beautiful and so essential because that's how the stigma is squashed and that's how people get educated and get informed and that's how change is made and lives are saved so uh that i just wanted to thank you for sharing that and for doing the work yeah thank you so and lizzie will definitely be a part of our cbd program because she is our resident expert on terpenes. As a matter of fact, I love to tell the story. I was telling somebody the other day, I think it was even telling Bronwyn that you're actually working with a gentleman in Finland Yes, I am. and he cannot use cannabis. There's no medical cannabis. So you're actually dialing down into the end of the phytocannabinoids, trying to find the foods mm -hmm. that he could to mimic the kind of effects. And how's yeah. that going? Extremely well. This, this man experienced a severe burnout. Um, more than five years ago and his life has been completely crippled. So just in a matter of uh, four sessions now, he's been able to step out. His sympathetic nervous system has been either overactive or underactive and it's been an extremely delicate balance and he wants to try cannabis and he also has OCD. So he came to me with all this research of wanting to start being a closet cultivator but he's terrified because it's very illegal where he, where he is. And mm -hmm. um, it's just been wonderful being able to take him away from that anxious train wreck really and be like let's start with your food first because spending you know months growing an illegal plant only to find that that cultivar that you ordered over the internet is the very wrong one for what for what you need yeah it's not going to serve mm -hmm. you that's going to make life miserable so let's find what terpenes work for you and your food and your diet now and i'm very you know, it actually works out in our favor. They as OCD very detailed diet like list to work with, but it really comes down to, to even the building blocks, and and then they're getting into like the esters and stuff like that with cannabis. I mean, there's so much more than beyond the cannabis. Amazing, yeah. That we're still learning about, and that's why with our, you know, we have people who are on here who are graduates. We'll go on educating you. We'll go on updating you because this is the science. And speaking, are, are, are you done, Lizzie? I didn't want to cut you off because I know that Allie also, um, Allie, you raised your hand as well. So I'm going to give Allison um, Bono a chance to speak to who is also a graduate. Go ahead, Allie. Oops, what happened? She's on mute. Oh. Oh, hi. Thank you for sharing your story. I had to put my straight face on. It's very emotional. And I definitely put my heart out for you. Um, I read the paragraph on you. And I my question for you is, what's your opinion on infused Reiki or energy healing for cancer? Or even implying like can of kids energy healing? Like, I is it did. something that like you're doing? Or is it like something that you wish to do? I, um, so... So I, I hear here two questions, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure, but if, I, if I'm if i not 100%, please um, uh, 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 straight me through. Um, so I do Reiki and I did Reiki for my daughter as well. And I still doing Reiki for myself. Every night I do, you know, laying on my hands, uh, taking all my rings off, metal off. So I'm very, very, very um, essential about that. And... Um, uh, going forward with my uh, CBD and cannabis work, I definitely want to integrate all my natural healings. And in fact, I don't think that can be separated. Um, I really honestly believe that um, uh, walking together through the nature, using the energy work using aromatherapy, which is immediately connected with the cannabis. I mean, we, cannabis wouldn't be what it cannabis is without terpenes, without aromatherapy. That's another world even to speak about, right? Mm -hmm. um, yoga, meditation is so crucial, mindfulness um, uh, in all this. And then you, you were just uh, talking, um, I think uh, Lizzie was talking about uh, nutrition. All, the certain plants have also uh, cannabinoids, not as many as a, as a cannabis itself, but they do have a cannabinoids and you can help enhance that whole 
well-being with the food as well. So I am looking forward to work with all people there specialized in different kind of branch of a natural healing and to bring to that client and to offer them full package of healing in, in his uh, uh, journey or her journey. Okay, we have um, a question you. from Morales. Mm -hmm. And that's the last question we'll take on camera just because we, you know, for the uh, cloud recording, I have to keep it under a certain amount of time. Um, Morales, did you have a question that you wanted to yes. on camera? Hi, everybody. I'm Carlos. From, oh, Carlos. Uh, yes. <laughs> oh, that's, okay. How are you? I'm I see good. Morales and I didn't make the connection. Yeah, I realized I'm not changed our my speaker next I month. Changed my, <laughs> I didn't change my, my name since this past summer and I had it as Morales with my school group. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> well, Carlos is going to be our speaker at the end of March, too. So, yeah, it's coming up. Well, hi, everybody. I'm here from North Carolina. Uh, Dinka, uh, I came in through the middle of, of your chat, but I got the most important facts and my heart goes out to you. I'm a father and, you know, just like Elizabeth, I, I won't say anything, but she said it perfectly to you. Um, I had a question and also a comment. Uh, also, Elizabeth, with regards to your, um, to your client in Europe, hit me up sometime. I, I have a uh, an opinion or or maybe some insight that that I could share with you with regards to that because I have also similar cases like that um, and uh, Dinka with um with CBD and the availability of it I'm sure you've come across you know actual perfect strains of CBD that have the right THC levels and also THC that has the you know strains that have the right CBD levels. So in states that it's legal to grow your own, you know, do you think that's that's important to maybe facilitate those plants to to people that can also admire just the, the connection with that nature? And you know, those plants can be perhaps passed on to the distillers or to the people who can get the oil because you know there's certain, you know, as you know, there's certain strains that have the perfect oil amounts like bubble you mean back like with charlotte's web that was the whole thing when they were found that charlotte's web was the one that could help with the children who were having the non-stop you know the epileptic exactly. you know convulsions so, so now um like here for example uh, i have been you know in, in contact with hemp growers and cbd growers who, who want to only grow certain strains to to maybe push the fact that they, this is not a hybrid, this is a, a pure sativa, or this is a pure CBD with this percentage and, and not market anything but that, because they think it's important, you know, to, to go back to those roots of the pure indicas and the pure sativas, um, as, and as well as the, the right CBD plants that we should be able to grow, you know, ourselves. So if it's legal to grow at least that part, um, you know, what, what is your opinion on that? Well, um, here's the th thing, very as simple as that. CBD comes from hemp. So, so you just grows hemp. You grow hemp. Hemp was grown centuries, right? I mean, they were using for making robes. Today, we have also hemp clothing. I mean, if you search online, you can find hemp clothing. So hemp is, um, and this is where CBD comes from, actually, the the, these cannabinoids and I'm using really only hemp. I did not use cannabis. Uh, I did not use marijuana. I used CBD from hemp, which but is there cousin. are there are CBD plants that are cannabis plants too. Correct. correct? Okay. Correct. So what I'm trying to say, that's what I have used, and what I was uh, uh, today uh, talking about people, they really don't, are uh, cannabis naive, they don't understand, they're still fearing from uh, cannabis, like getting high, I'm not sure what's going to happen. They still don't have to break the law to use that. There is a natural plant that doesn't make you high, that has just enough THC to bond those cannabinoids, to make them perfectly work for you. They're working for me at this moment. I am not having brace on my knees. I am having the lowest thyroid uh, medication that I ever had in my life. 
I don't use any uh, uh, anti-anxiety pills, any Xanax or anything whatsoever. Yeah, uh, being on regular regimen of, of CBD that comes from hemp with only less than 0.3 THC. So I'm talking here now only to the clients. They're, they're afraid. Now, of course, there is so much out there. If you, insomnia, um, any uh, deeper chronic uh, disease, um, skin disease, let's just talk a simple skin disease, what uh, actually uh, CBD infused with THC can do. I mean, fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, search is out there done uh, for, for many chronic diseases. So I am 100% with you with a, a certain strains, like clear strains. I love that as well. Um, um, so, so yeah. Like, like my question is like right now, if, if I'm looking at a, a seed shop and you find CBD plant, a hemp plant, for example, but there's also... A variety of seeds for you know hemp that that have those levels that, that higher levels of cbg cba and so on as, as they try to push it so my thing is as a cannabis coach we want to empower those you know our, our clients to perhaps not only connect with with the knowledge but with the nature of growing it themselves if it's available yeah. you know for the for the matter of fact that i have people that they cannot afford it you know, even, even at wholesale CBD, it's like, it's expensive. So, so for them, it's like, you know, I'll, I'll wait four months and grow my own plants uh, instead of, of having to, to, to cut their budget and pay for that themselves. So they're looking at that as a sense. So I'm learning a little bit from them in trying to, to focus on the right seeds to buy for, for that purpose. There's a lot of work out there to do, a lot of work, a lot of work from all of us and from uh, government, from uh, states as well to find, and, as, and a scientist as well. So I think every single day we will get something new, some uh, knowledge of new strains, knowledge of new essence, 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 essence so that helps that in, infuse that CBD or that THC or cannabis or hemp itself. So, and different strains itself. So um, I think it's a lot out there. I think we're just a small little dot in all this that trying to find a way, what's the best way. And I think you are, um, Carlos, really on the right path. I, I love what you do. And I think- yeah. You know what I'd like to do because I'm gonna wind up the recording part of it. Dinka, give me the, your email address so I can give to people if they would like yes. to contact you, we'll have you, you know, in for the coursework, you know, we'll have your contact, but for, if people are watching this or watching the replay, how do they get in touch with you? I'll type so, out your. Yes. For right now, um, eventually I will have probably some other email for just cannabis, but for right now, very simple. It's going to be, be Dinka, my first name, D-I-N-K-A dot ambassador at gmail.com. Okay, I put your email there for everybody to see. I really wanna thank you. Like what Lizzie said, putting yourself out there like that, telling your story. I'm so grateful to all of you who came to listen to Dinka's story. Um, you have a way to get a hold of her. We'll stay on for a little bit. Um, if you have questions about the Academy, for instance, Dinka was talking about nutrition. I mean, we are able to put together a blended, a customized. Um, there are some people who are doing the cannabis. Um, Teresa, for instance, who's here, she's doing the mind gut along with the holistic health. We were able to do, we're constantly adding programs. We have wonderful mentors. And um, if you're interested in the CBD program, we'll have more information on that really soon. So I'm going to um, end the recording, but we'll be on here for a little bit. Thank you, Dinka. You did so Thank great. You so much. Thank right. you.